With the advent of the SUV craze in the market, it was only time before SUVs stopped becoming only about off-road capability and started becoming more about comfort, luxury, and sporty dynamics. Porsche, for example, was one of the first companies to jump on this bandwagon with the Cayenne and recently the Macan. But now it's not only them. Companies like Bentley have produced the Bentayga, which is crazy if you really think about it. And then there's the Jaguar F-Pace, which is crazy but brilliant and even the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. But what if you don't want to spend so much money on a fast SUV? What are your choices? Well, what about this? The all new Seat Ateca FR. It takes all the things that we like about the Seat Ateca, but adds an aggressive, sporty FR trim level to it. Add, add in another powerful engine and some more special features, then you've got something that is pretty interesting. But my question is, if things keep going the way they are, are hot SUVs going to be the new hot hatch? Should we be worried? In order to find out, I've come here to Austria and I'm going to be driving the Atec IFR as well as the Leon Cupra to see if there is something that I should be really worried about. Are you interested? Let's find out. Come on, let's go. We are no stranger to the Seat Ateca. In fact, we have about, I think, eight to 10 reviews of this car already. But for the sake of those who haven't been able to watch the other reviews, let's cover some of the basic exterior and the interior functions before we get to the good bit. Up front, well, it looks very similar to the regular standard um, Ateca, like the reference or the style or the excellence, depending on where you live and which market, these trims will be called a little bit differently. But as you go towards the center and down here, that's where you start noticing the changes. This being the FR, over here we have the FR badging, glossy honeycomb front grille, surrounded by a shiny chrome effect plastic. We have the Seat lighting LED lights on this car. Further down, more glossy black trims for the lower part of the bumper. Some fake exhaust, sorry, fake uh, intake design, but it's okay. Down here, we have the front assist camera. Then the logo is two dimensional, so the adaptive cruise control radar is behind here. And we have these interesting diffuser-like lower part of the bumper. This is where the FR really stands out. I think it looks really cool. This accented brushed aluminum effect plastic that runs all the way along the bottom, kind of separates the monotony of the front a little bit in terms of color, adds that extra dash of aggressiveness and sportiness. The Ateca FR comes with 19 inch rims as standard, like the ones we have here. We have a dual tone scheme with black on the insides and a shiny metal color on the outside. Looks really cool, a lot of different options, including a full glossy black rim. And as you go further down the side, here as well, the difference in the FR trim, you can see that we have a lower side skirt. It has a aluminum effect plastic. Adds that extra touch. And another thing you will notice is that the wheel arches, although they are squared off, obviously, but they're not black. They are the same color as the body. So this kind of makes the car look a little bit lower than the standard Ateca. The roof rails are aluminum, look really nice a shiny chrome around the trim, uh, trim around the windows as well. So I think the side profile, you know, has that sportiness to it, but at the same time, it's not too in your face. What do you guys think? First thing you'll notice here at the back of the Ateca FR is the spoiler. No hot hatch, or sorry, in this case, hot SUV, is complete without a spoiler. Along with that, we have these interesting glossy black side extensions. As we go further towards the center, you have the Seat logo over here, the reversing camera down there, a Teca badging, and the all-important FR 
badge over here, along with the four drive badge, which denotes that this car has the all wheel drive system. We've talked about this in detail. It's basically a Haldex system. I'll mention that a little bit later on when we're driving. And finally, down here we have a really cool diffuser-like rear bumper. That uh, gray brushed aluminum color that we saw up in the front, in the front bumper, is also here in the back. And hallelujah, our prayers have been answered. We have real twin exhaust. No fake business over here. So what do you guys think? Put your comments down below. Now let's talk some numbers. That's the hardest part of my job. I have to memorize all these numbers. So let's see if I can get them right. The Sieta Teca FR is 4.3 meters long. That's about 14 feet. It's two meters wide. It's about six foot six inches. It has a 50 liter tank for the fuel. It weighs about 1,300 kilograms. The boot is about 510 liters. You have a choice of petrol and diesel engine options. Starting off with a 1.4 Eco TSI with 150 horsepower, then a 2 liter TSI with 190 horsepower. They're either front wheel drive or all wheel drive. You, get, you have the choice of 6 speed manual, 6 speed DSG, or a 7 speed DSG. In terms of diesel engines, you have the 2 liter TDI with either 150 horsepower or 190 horsepower. The 150 horsepower engine comes with a 6 speed manual and 4 wheel drive, and the 190 horsepower engine comes with a 7 speed DSG and all wheel drive. I think I got all those numbers right. The Ateca FR comes with not one, but two keys. Well, sort of. So this is the standard key. It has keyless entry, so it unlocks when you go close to it. This is for the auxiliary ventilator and heater. So on a cold day or on a hot day, depending on the setting you have, you can press this and then you can see that little green light. So it starts ventilating the car. So it'll be doing this by the time you come inside so that it's cool. Or if you have set it for uh, heating, it does the opposite. Of course, it heats it on a cold day. So let's check out inside. The door opens really wide. It's a fairly tall door. You can see a lot of dirt, <laughs> that's thanks to us, and a lot of mosquitoes, that's thanks to Mother Nature. But anyway, materials up here are not the best. They're a little bit hard to touch. But again, because it's an Ateca, it offers you a little bit of a compromise, you get a little bit better deal by slightly compromising on all these fancy uh, soft touch materials. There's a glossy black inlay which has LED lighting underneath and you can change that to whatever uh, color that you want. Very similar to the other Leon, so other Seat cars. Padded materials over here, padded materials over here, hard plastic, hard plastic, door bins and this has the Seat sound sound system as well. Let's divert our attention to the interior. The seats, well, these are Alcantara with leatherette. This is standard on the Ateca FR. You can upgrade to leather, but why spend that extra money? Might as well leave it like this. Plus, it's a little bit more environmental friendly. The seats in this case are electronically adjustable for lumbar support, adjusting the base and the back. The steering wheel as well can be adjusted for reach and rake like so. The Ateca FR is still a compact SUV so the seating position is quite high but even in this lowest setting you know it's it's all right it does feel sporty enough but your knees are still upright and the dashboard is also quite low and the body is also quite tall and you can feel that but we'll see how it feels when you actually drive out on the road. Apart from that to add to that sense of occasion, the pedals are aluminium. That's a little detail which always goes a long way to make you feel nice. The dashboard is very familiar, very Seat, very Ateca. Nice plush soft materials on the top, but as you go further down, the plastics are a bit loose and hard and 
tacky and for example the plastic over here when you put your knee over here over on long distances kind of starts to hurt but again because of these small compromises it still offers you a good deal again the dashboard materials are really soft so at least what you see on top of the dashboard is nice and because it's a little bit soft and matted it doesn't reflect when the sun is shining so that's pretty cool down here we have the steering wheel it's the fr steering wheel so it has a flat bottom a contrast red stitching on the inside this perforated material for when you put your hands it has paddle shifters for the dsg automatic gearbox windshield wiping stock up here navigations for the menu over here i'll show you that in a minute the voice activation button and as we go towards the left hand side we see the buttons for your audio controls and telephone the light indicator stock down here and if you peek all the way down here you see the stock for the adaptive cruise control now let's take a look at the uh, instrument uh, instrument cluster we have a analog tachometer on the left with a temperature gauge a uh, analog speedometer on the right with a fuel gauge and a screen in the middle now don't be alarmed we just started driving so that's why the consumption is really high right now we're driving right now we have the 2 liter TDI 190 horsepower diesel engine and of course this will go down later and I'll report on that later on but we've been driving the 2 liter TSI petrol earlier today on the highway and I saw numbers as low as 6.4 liters per 100 kilometers I'm pretty sure that can go a little bit lower as well so along with consumption you have your coolant temperature oil temperature road sign uh, recognition system speed average speed distance all these driving information you have a host of whole host of assistant systems like lane assist which actually steers the car using the steering wheel to keep it in line um, when you're straying off the lane blind spot monitoring rear traffic alert and front assist apart from that there is the navigation so you have exit commands like so or a compass if you don't have anything programmed audio controlled telephone vehicle status the usual things now let's take a look on the side this is the 8 inch touchscreen now the FR and the excellence trim levels for the Ateca share a lot of similar uh, specifications and options and kit and they're almost you know they have pretty much all the things and all the options that you would want but as far as I've understood the FR does not come with this top of the line 8 inch touchscreen as standard you only get the 5 inch and this is an optional extra I would suggest you do get the system it's fairly good the navigation sometimes gets a little bit confused and yeah you have to learn to you know not just completely rely on this but also check yourself first which the exits are and things like that you have some hotkey buttons on the left hand side radio media phone voice command I'm sure you're all fam familiar with that volume control and power on and off like so and you have a knob on the right hand side for example in this case when you're on the navigation in the map you can zoom in and out really easily and this is always really useful it's the screen is also not the most responsive as you can see you know it you kind of have to prod it a little bit harder and sometimes it takes a couple couple touches to get it to do what you want it to do and if you do that you do notice that the screen kind of flickers a little bit so eh, it's okay it's pretty good it does the job well and you know you can't really complain too much more hotkey functions over here don't need to repeat myself let me just show you some quick interesting things you have full link so Android Auto Apple CarPlay mirror link and you have traffic live traffic control uh, updates if you have that option installed you can store images and you have a separate air conditioning control so you can set for example that auxiliary ventilator that I was showing you guys there's a button over here so you can have ventilation you can turn it on and off or you can have it into heating mode and well this is another interesting part over here you have vehicle status that's okay um, tire pressure loss indicator hill descent control you see over here I'll show you the different driving modes later on and if you keep pressing this next you get a lap timer which is unique to this FR trim level 
so you can obviously time your laps duh <laughs> then you have off-road information so it shows you the angle of lean it shows you um, you know different things like that convenience consumer so what how much of fuel is your air conditioning consuming and uh, other consumption figures eco trainer so it gives you eco points to see how you're driving and uh, helps you improve your efficiency and uh, things like that anyway that's enough of that let's go down here standard hot link buttons for your parking assist um, so this actually will park the car parallel park for you or perpendicular park the auto engine shut off parking sensors on and off hazard lights power tailgate lifting this is the air conditioning climate control you have heated seats and um, defoggers vent controls up here down here dual zone temperature for the climate control that ventilator button I was telling you guys about and well yeah pretty standard as we take our attention down here there's an inductive charger which Seat puts in almost all its cars now so really good initiative it's good to see a easy and important technology just drop your phone in as soon as it sit down and it starts charging automatically if not you have a 12 volt power socket a couple USB ports and an auxiliary over here you see the engine start stop button and when the engine is off it pulses to mimic a heartbeat again very common among Seats and over here we have the DSG gear control we also have the four-wheel drive system this is the seven-speed DSG that comes with the 2-liter TDI with 190 horsepower electronic parking brake with the auto function for that and this this is the final thing which is important for the drivetrain you have different drive mode selectors you have eco so in this case the throttle response is dulled the engine holds a lower rpm the gearbox shifts up easier uh, earlier to maintain a low rpm and improve efficiency of course the engine start stop is also activated this is normal mode so you also have the dcc in the ateca fr which is um, dynamic uh, uh, chassis control so the suspension adapters can also be varied so this is still a soft setting and you have um, light steering wheel soft suspension and medium throttle response sport mode well what do you think it is <laughs> it's a sport mode so it has higher uh, sharper throttle responses stiffer suspension and heavier progressive steering you can individualize these systems as well and the last but not least you have two um, four-wheel drive modes for off-road and snow let's just take a quick look at some of the cubby spaces you have a couple beverage holders it's interesting to note that one is a little bit smaller and shallower than the other and down here we have a center armrest with a cubby hole let's give it the shake test yeah fairly solid and this armrest itself is really 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 damp so feels solid to use a glove box which is damped with a SD card reader for your maps and a CD uh, CD-ROM player as well as a glove box which is fairly decent it is not lockable but at least it's damped we also have a really large panoramic sunroof I mean this extends all the way from the front of the car past the b pillar all the way past even the c pillar it's enormous and it's i think really makes the car feel a lot more spacious a lot more airy and i think it's always fun to be able to look up up especially for passengers sitting in the back not only that you can also open about half of the sunroof so it really has a great open experience the back seat of the Ateca is a really nice place to be. Getting in is really easy thanks to its SUV stance, which means the ride height is raised. So in, getting inside is really easy and the door opens fairly wide as well. The seats are pretty comfortable. They have decent padding. The bench is fairly flat. So even a third passenger in the middle is actually fairly comfortable. Yes, there is a large central transmission tunnel, as you can see 
but because the footwells are large and wide, you can share it with your co-passengers and shouldn't be a problem. Apart from that, there is uh, pouches in the seat backs, air conditioning vents over here. Unfortunately, I do not see any USB or 12 volt power sockets back here. Hmm, I don't know why that's not there. Leg room is very sufficient. I'm five foot eight or 1.7 meters. This seat is set to my driving position. Headroom is also very generous. Again, this large panoramic roof just makes the car feel really big. Not only that, you have isofix points for child seats on the outside two seats. A central armrest with cup holders, which also can be folded down to be a ski hatch. <laughs> Excuse me swatting all the mosquitoes away. <laughs> Let's open the hatch. That's a pretty quick hatch, don't you think? Let's check the safety. So, it comes down really quickly. Whoa. So, I would give that a five out of 10. If you have a small child, it could be scary. It's not necessarily very sensitive. I'm not sure you can change the sensitivity. Maybe that was just a one-time thing. No, it's, it's, quite, it's quite hard. But anyway, as long as you're careful, I guess it's okay, just keep that in mind. The boot is, as you can see, very rectangular, very easy to access. It's 510 liters in this configuration. The loading lip here is fairly minimal. The bumper does jut out and protrude quite a bit, especially because of this extra FR style lower bumper. So you have to be careful not to hit, hit this nice brushed aluminum part down here when you're loading heavier items. But once you get it inside, it's very easy. You have, um, sorry, there we go. You have levers on the side to fold the seats down, as you can see in a 60-40 fashion to increase the boot space. And down here, you will see, this is just a temporary wheel, so it's not a full-size wheel, it's just a space saver. But it also has the Seat Sound subwoofer in the middle, along with your tire jack kit and a first aid kit over there. And finally, there's also a tow bar, which comes out electronically and also retracts electronically. Please don't kill me again. <laughs> now it didn't, so maybe it's learning. First things first, before we get a taste of how this car behaves on some winding, twisty roads, let's take it out on the highway and see how it does there. Truth is, most people will spend most of their time in such cars driving on the highway, so highway mannerisms are very important to test. Well, first thing I can tell you already is the steering is actually pretty good. I mean, if you've watched my reviews earlier, you see that I always generally complain about these MQB car steering feel. Now I've driven the Leon FR, I've driven the uh, Ibiza FR, I've driven the standard Ateca, I've driven the Octavia, which is also very similar because it's the same VW MQB platform. And I've always been a little bit disappointed, to a small degree at least, with the steering. But the Ibiza that I drove a few uh, about a month ago was actually surprisingly good. And the same goes with this Ateca FR. Now you have different driving modes, which we will come to later on, but in the sport mode, the steering is a lot more heavier. You do actually feel the changes in the feel as the tires load up mid corner and things like that. And of course there is uh, a lot of weight in this um, sports setting. So it really does have that little bit extra that makes you feel happy about it. Because according to me, there's only two real important things for a car to be you know, sporty and engaging and dynamic to drive. And the first is steering feel. It's really important because you have to feel connected with the road. You have to have a little bit of a faster rack so there's quick 
corrections to make quick corrections and quick changes and the car the car should feel really agile so if you have a slow steering rack you know that's kind of takes a lot of the fun out of it now this Ateca FR doesn't necessarily have a fast track but it has a progressive steering rack which means there's kind of like a little gearbox inside so depending on the speed and how, how, how quickly you're turning the steering wheel it's a lot more sharper when it needs to be so you can definitely feel that obviously out on the highway it's not really that prominent because you're not really using it that way but um, on the highway at least even in sports mode the extra weight helps in making it feel a lot more stable and a lot more planted so another thing that it does in the sports mode is that it firms up the suspension the Ateca FR as standard gets DCC or the dynamic chassis control so this is the adaptive damper system so it has two modes it has normal and sport in normal the ride is a lot more supple the, the suspension is a lot more compliant so it soaks up the bumps a lot better whereas in sport mode it becomes tight and firm and it reduces body roll around tight corners and thus improves dynamics and handling. So let's check out normal mode now. There's a dial down here to change the driving mode selector. In normal mode, the steering automatically feels so much lighter now. But at the same time, you know, it doesn't really have a dead center. Not too bad. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm wiggling the steering wheel a little bit and the car does shift its weight a little bit back and forth and it does track really well so again it's okay in the normal mode the suspension is also much more supple so it's a lot more comfortable and a lot more relaxing to drive and finally there's also eco mode so here the throttle throttle response is dulled so that you're not making sudden jerky motions with the engine it's a lot more gradual the seven speed dsg that we have in this car changes gear uh, changes up a lot sooner in the rev range so that you're not revving the engine out too high and leading that leading to higher consumption of course you do have the other two standard uh, off-road modes you have the off-road terrain response mode and you have the snow mode as well so this also includes things like hill descent control and there's a lot of um, cool features on the uh, on the uh, infotainment system for sports information gives you the pressure of your turbocharger the G <laughs> that you're generating around the corner I don't think a, a small SUV is going to be generating too much of great G forces and things like that you even have an off-road information which is similar to that which gives you your uh, angle and you know things like that basically which most people would not use but hey if you want something to play with it's there now coming back to the the driving dynamics of the Ateca FR. Let's put it into sports mode. I mean, that's what this car is meant for. And let's kind of test 80 to 130. Put my foot down, pulling out. Here we go, 120, 130. So it does pick up pace relatively well. I mean, 190 horsepower is, you know, might not really seem like a lot but it's enough to entertain you without letting you, uh, you know, do something silly and get into a tricky situation. Of course, this is not the Ateca Cupra. This is just the Ateca FR. So 190 horsepower is not really gonna blow your brains off, <laughs> so to speak. But uh, on the highway, it's okay. It changes down really quickly with the seven speed DSG. The DSG is always a really great gearbox. It's one of my favorite gearboxes I would say and this is the seven speed so it, it, it changes much more quicker and because it's a double clutch the transition between gear to gear is also really seamless because in a double clutch gearbox the following gear is already preloaded so the clutch just transfers from the even set to the odd set of gears so that way sharp responses in the, the gearbox sharp response in the throttle Turbo lag is not too bad. I mean, I don't really feel it that much because I've already been, uh, I mean, we were driving on the highway now, so the, the engine is already running at relatively high RPM. So there's not so much of a noticeable turbo lag that you have to really wait for the turbos to spool up or things like that. So overall, it's pretty good. The navigation system is okay. I mean, this is not something new for us. We've seen this before. It's a very common system. 
The thing I do like about it is that it has the knob to zoom in and zoom out in the navigation, for example, and you can use that for some other functions and some other menus. And when you put your hand up, it recognizes that you're, you know, there's a proximity sensor and then the sub menus pop up as well. So when you don't have your hand near it, you just have a full screen of just the navigation or whatever option that you have selected. So it's pretty cool that way. It's also really relaxing to drive. If we put it in normal mode right now, it's relaxing because it's softer, the suspension is smoother. Really good sound insulation, really good sound insulation. And we have a big panoramic sunroof as well, but there's really good sound deadening and there's really good visibility out front. Again, this is an SUV, so you're sitting a little bit taller. I have the seat in the lowest position, if you can tell, and I'm kind of sitting a further back because I want to have that sporty feeling. But if you sit upright, you sit up a little bit higher in the seat and you look out forward, it's much more clearer. Tall windows on the side, a large rear window. So visibility is great. And if you notice, I'm the car also has DCC, so it, <laughs> it just picked up pace automatically. Again, this DCC, sorry, the ACC, ugh, always confusing with all these different uh, uh, abbreviations. ACC, Adaptive Cruise Control. So the Sateca FR also gets the Adaptive Cruise Control that we've seen in a lot of other Seats before. It's really good. It's uh, not too abrupt. Of course, even this can be set. You can choose in the sport mode. The, the, the ACC, you know, picks up pace a lot more quickly. It brakes a lot more harder. So it gives you that instant, you know, change in speed. Whereas in normal mode or eco mode, it's a more gradual uh, operation. So even there you have a choice to personalize what you want. There's a whole host of assistant systems. There is lane assist. So with this, I don't want to really demonstrate, but maybe I can just show you if I take my, I'm just, I'm not, I'm barely holding the steering wheel right now. And as you can see, it's, it's already, it's turning the car slightly for me. And it's giving me a notification that, hey, you know, put your hands on the wheel and keep, keep, it, in, keep it in line but it, 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 it does turn the steering wheel actually. It doesn't do a brake-based lane keep assist. It actually turns the steering wheel. But I honestly don't like that. It always feels like I'm fighting the car sometimes because it wants to do its own thing and I like to be in control, you know? I like to drive the car. It's my car. <laughs> so that way it's, uh, it's good if you're going on long drives and you don't want to, you know, it's, it's a lot more safer in case you're tired or you're talking to somebody or you're filming like this, it's always, kind of multitasking and that's not always the best thing there's also things like wait let me pull it up again there we go blind spot monitoring rear traffic alert front assist and blind spot monitoring so you this FR already comes with most of these things already um, you know specified onto this model it's only certain things like you can upgrade the seats to leather but we would recommend you to save the money do your little bit to kind of help the environment and the animals and stick to these Alcantara seats. They're really comfortable, you know, they're, they have really good support. You have a lot of adjustments as well, so you can uh, raise and lower the seat back, uh, sorry, the seat base. There is no extension of the under thigh support, but yeah, I mean, in this segment, of course, you probably won't, ex you shouldn't be expecting that. You can change the lumbar support and the reclining of the back. But yes, finding a comfortable seating position is also really easy. Steering wheel can also be adjusted completely for up and down and in and out. And let's see, what else? The adaptive cruise control, like I said, also has, it's because it's adaptive, it has a radar sensor so you can choose the distance that you want to maintain with the car in the front. So the car is really, he's got your back. He's your buddy and he's, he's not gonna let anything happen to you. You also have paddle shifters behind the steering wheel if you want to take more control over the gearbox. Of course, you can flip the gear lever to the right side and then go up and down with the gear lever if that's what you prefer. But uh, we will take this car out onto some winding roads later on. I know the highway is not really the best place to test a sporty uh, car. But um, I would say overall, highway mannerisms, it passes the AJ test.
we here in Autogefühl like to be very thorough. So we have the Ateca FR, we drove it on the highway and we'll get to driving it off on the country roads in a little bit. But to compare with the benchmark Seat performance car, that is the Leon, we've come here to this racetrack. First, we're gonna take it out on some wet skid, uh, skid uh, what are these called? Skid tracks um, to kind of understand how the car balances and behaves. We have the front wheel drive, Leon Cupra 300 horsepower first with the standard brake setup then we're going to jump into the Leon uh, ST 300 Cupra which has four wheel drive and the upgraded Brembo brake package. Maybe I'm just saying that that we're thro thorough but maybe the truth is I just want to have fun but either way let's get started. So first let's take out the Leon Cupra with 300 horsepower and only front wheel drive and see how it is. Wow, this sounds nice. And like I was saying just a little bit ago, uh, two things that are very important in a performance car, steering, feel, and sound. Well, the Cupra sounds great. And ooh, well, already it's really slippery. This is special slippery tarmac with a lot of water. So it's meant to do this and it's a lot of fun. If you want to watch our full review of the Leon Cupra, make sure you check out the video as well. Thomas has gone in depth. We've done two reviews, in fact, one um, on track and one in the snow. So this will give us a little bit of an idea to see how, you know, if there, if the uh, how the Ateca Cupra perhaps will be. So there's another guy out on the track. Let's just wait for him to... The Ateca FR, as you guys know, has the four-wheel drive system. It's similar to the Haldex or Borg Warner coupling system. We've covered this several times before. Basically, it's transverse mounted front-wheel drive engine layout with uh, a propeller shaft connected to the front. Wait, we have uh, somebody calling us on the... Is that for us? No, they said the blue one should leave. Okay, cool. So Jen is our cameraman, always my German translator. So like I was saying, this four-wheel drive system, the propeller shaft is con uh, connected to the transaxle at the front and goes to the electronic clutch, the Haldex unit at the back. So it's always on-demand front uh, rear-wheel drive as well. So all-wheel drive rather, on-demand all-wheel drive. And it's always only a 50-50. Yeah, that's for us. It's always a uh, on-demand 50-50 at max. So here we go. Let's see how much of a fool AJ makes of himself. Wow, instant understeer, of course. And towards that side of the track, we have a slightly more grippy tarmac. And towards the middle of this uh, circle track, we have a much more slippery and a really wet part of the track. As you can see, it's just understeering. Go ahead out a little bit straight. And no, nope, can't do it, just understeers. This has the, we are in the Cupra mode so it isn't have doesn't have uh, the traction control completely off it still allows a lot of slip as you guys can clearly see but it's not it's not really letting me kick the tail out too much let's put it in first gear and then no i have my foot flat to the throttle not really doing much so i think it's we can have a little bit more fun if we get out of this car and get into the four wheel drive version of the Leon Cupra. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Now we're in the Leon Cupra 300 with all wheel drive and the upgraded brake package. This also is running on semi-slick tires. So we'll see how this car behaves on the skid track. As usual, first we're gonna get on this straight to get our tires wet already because it's a four-wheel drive it tends to oversteer as you guys can see so it's a lot more fun now the Leon Cupra 300 the standard five-door hatchback only is available with front-wheel drive whereas this uh, ST the estate version can be bought with all-wheel drive so or the Ateca FR also obviously comes with four-wheel drive this has the seven-speed DSG whereas the one we just drove has um, had a six-speed manual Wow, 300 horsepower, you can really feel it. It's a nice kick in the butt. <laughs> and there's nobody else, so 
let's see how this behaves. As usual, we have it in the Cupra mode, so traction is limited. Let's uh, do a oops, Scandinavian flick, I thought, but wow, see this does oversteer, but it's a four-wheel drift sort of a situation, and it's, no, I've spun out. <laughs> so, I'm really bad at this, it's quite evident. Let's try that again, shall we? Easy on the throttle. Let the car rotate. No. But the traction control is still kind of, you know, it, it's, it's, it's trying to push the car into an understeer as much as possible because obviously understeer is more safe. As you can see, you know, I have the steering wheel completely turned to the left, but it's not really responding. So let's try, let's try complete traction control off. Can I? There we go. Is it? I guess so. I don't know. We will find out soon enough. Well, it seems like it. And in this case, we do have a lot of wheel spin, a lot of understeer as well. And, but because it's because of the all wheel drive, you do feel the tail kicking out a lot more. So it's a lot more fun, I would say. And because the traction control is not messing around too much, you can control it like that with the with all four wheels and there we go now we're able to hold a much more effective drift yeah it was a lot of fun so in the Ateca FR of course you have only 190 horsepower you don't have 300 to play around with like this but because of the all-wheel drive system you can you can throw it around like that and have a lot of fun so yeah I think now it's time to stop fooling around with the Ateca sorry the uh, Ibiza oh, I can't think straight with the Leon Cupra we'll take it out on the dry racetrack to actually test you know how it handles on a racetrack and then with that information and this really serious research <laughs> that we've just conducted we'll take out the Ateca FR on some nice winding country roads and then see well if there really is some substance to this hot SUV thing that they're trying to do. All right, guys, now let's have some real fun. We're out on the racetrack in the Leon FR. So let's see what this car can do. I don't know this track yet, so bear with me while I get to grips with finding the apexes and where I should, uh, where I can really put the power down, etc. But right off the bat, I must say I am thoroughly impressed with this car it is a genuine hot hatch and it's a lot of fun on track there's a lot of grip but this is just the front wheel drive version we're driving the Leon Cupra SC which is the um, three-door one-two hatch three-door version a little bit of torque steer great brakes dives in really nice power out on the corner find the second apex power out a lot of body roll, but it's okay. Clip the apex here, clip the apex there. Brakes, dive in. A little bit of lift off oversteer. Ah, my racing line is really terrible, so please excuse me for that. There's a hairpin right here. So, oh man, this is a lot of fun. Okay. Well, this is much more for just the fun of it than a real uh, test because I really doubt the Ateca FR is going to be able to come even close to this. This is really an out and out track car, hot hatch. I mean, you can really throw this car around. And this is the SC again. So this is only a three door, so has a short wheelbase. Simply because it's a three door, it's definitely a little bit lighter as well. 
than the Ateca FR. So I highly doubt that the Ateca FR can really keep, keep its hold its own against this car. But now that I know what this car can do and how it can make me feel, I'm sure that it will help me make a better test of the Ateca. There is definitely a little bit of torque steer. I feel that on the, on the straightaway over there. And throttle response is a little bit, I mean, it's, it's great, of course, but the DSG, when I really want the power, it takes a little bit of time for it to do it on its own, to shift down, I mean. If I put it in the manual mode, it's a little bit better. Using the paddle shifters like this, Again, for a front wheel drive car, there's a tremendous amount of grip. A little bit of lift off oversteer so you can have that little bit of fun. Oh, messed up that corner completely over there. But just flat through that. Wow, this is a lot of fun. Hard on the brakes, dive in, power out. Understeer is a little bit, but it's not that bad. This <laughs> is a lot of fun. Man, I love my job. Ah, it changes direction so well. Again, because it's a shorter wheelbase, it's a lot more nimble. It's like a little mosquito. You can just dive it in, get on the power, and then control that oversteer a little bit that you get when you lift off. But putting a little bit of power will rectify that and give more grip to the front wheels. And then on the straightaway, a little bit of torque steer, but nothing that, can, that can't be corrected by a little bit more steering input. The seats, unfortunately, I think are really, really letting it down. As you can see, I'm, I'm being tossed around quite a bit. It's not really holding me in place. It does have a little bit of side, side bolstering, but I wouldn't say it's, it's, not, it's not really sufficient. It's not really doing its job too well. Unfortunately, let me just slow down, take a breath. Can I find any adjustments for the side bolstering? No, nope. it's a completely mechanically adjustable seat. So Jonas just let out a breath of relief, a sigh of relief. He's been thrown around. You're not done yet, Jonas. I'm just getting started, buddy. But yeah, the seats, man. Well, my job is not to review the Leon, so I'm not going to do that now, but if the seats were a little bit better, I think I think I would have enjoyed this car a lot more. The DCC, the dynamic chassis control in this car, is really doing its job really well. I mean, although, yes, it does have quite a bit of body roll, and you feel that roll a lot more thanks to this, these really bad seats. I think, I think it's, I can't expect, I mean, I shouldn't, I cannot expect the Ateca FR to be like this. Um, but, um, well, at least now we know what Seat can do. And if you still want a practical hot hatch, you know, I don't see hot SUVs really being a serious threat to cars such as this anytime soon. No, I really don't think so. So, if you don't mind, I'm gonna do a couple more laps, try to focus on my racing line, because this has been a complete mess, as you can see. And we'll jump back in to the Ateca in a little bit. We found some winding country roads here in Austria on our way back to the hotel. So we thought we'd give it a try and see how the Seat Ateca FR really drives on winding twisty roads. Now we have collected our important research <laughs> that we did with the Leon Cupra and we can use that to compare it with the Ateca FR. Furthermore, I'm driving the 2 liter TDI now. This also has 190 horsepower. It's also a two liter engine. It also has four wheel drive and seven speed DSG, but of course it's diesel. 
Now the 2 liter TSI that I was driving, again, similar specs, seven speed DSG, four wheel drive, 190 horsepower. On the highway, I was getting about 6.4 liters for 100 kilometers. So let's start off with comparing the mileage of that car versus this car, just to see if we have been driving this far enough. Mm, I don't think so. It still says 10.7, which is of course too high, but you can be rest assured that this will definitely be much lower, not much lower, you know, at least a little bit lower than the two liter TSI engine. We'll come back to that later on and see if the, um, the mileage is increased later as we keep driving. But let's talk about, let's talk about the other thing that I was mentioning when I was driving the, two, the petrol engine earlier. I said steering and sound are two important things. I talked about the steering on that car and of course it's the same on this car. And well, with having driven the Leon Cupra, yes, the Leon Cupra assisted steering system is noticeably much better. Yeah, but that being said, this isn't, this is the Attack IFR has decent steering and of course it's an SUV so you can't expect it to be as sharp so all things considered it's pretty good now talking about the sound this is a diesel engine so the sound is not fantastic but the 2 liter TSI that I drove earlier unfortunately I couldn't show you guys on camera but when I did get to drive it a little bit in some smaller streets it did sound pretty fun you know it had a low down grunt it was very low uh, you know had a lot of bass in the sound so it was quite interesting and quite engaging apart from that let's see i've noticed that the third gear in the seven speed dsg is quite tall so when you're shifting from second to third you will really lose your revs and when you're driving around you know between 50 to 80 or 100 you really want to be switching between second and third gear but because third is such a tall gear i kind of feel confused and the gearbox also seems a bit confused you know do you stay in second like for example at 50 okay third third gear has about 2200 rpm if i shift down to second gear it shoots all the way up to almost 4000 rpm so third gear is really tall and that kind of and this is a diesel engine so of course the torque is produced low down in the rev range so the actual horsepower figure might be low because when you multiply torque with a low rpm you get a low output but you know it doesn't really make that much sense to have it revving high so this kind of doesn't seem to work that well i think the two liter tsi that i drove the petrol was a little bit better in the sports mode that we have here now the suspension is a lot more firm so the body doesn't roll as much i've noticed that and the throttle response is fairly sharp again if you can somehow get over the speed of you know 50 60 and keep it in third gear i think it's it's a lot more responsive then but overall yes i think if you want to drive an suv in a very sporty manner this isn't going to be the car for you but at the same time if you want something which can keep five people in this with you know relatively good comfort and have enough space for your weekend luggage and be able to go off road because it has four wheel drive and a good um, ground clearance this car ticks most of your boxes and the fr with its performance oriented outlook also is pretty fun and if you want to keep it quieter of course the normal mode even when you're on winding country roads really makes such a big difference the car is so quiet you can barely hear the noise outside and in this normal mode it's so calm and compliant and soft and smooth that you're just effortlessly just gliding along these little streets still there we go I see 70 so let's put it back into sports mode check that nobody's behind me let's drop it down to 30 and let's do a 30 to 70 once we get out of the straight okay here we go ready three two one flooring it 
See, it goes up really high on the in second gear, and then once it comes into third gear, it kind of kind of loses steam a little bit. So anyway, now we're on in a hundred zone. So let's let's keep it there. I don't know if you can hear the engine. Let me drop it down to third gear. Can you hear it? It sounds okay. I mean, for a four liter turbo diesel engine. Yeah, it's not too bad. I wish you could have put the seat a little bit lower because it's a dead giveaway when your seats are, when your knees are upright that you're, you're not really driving a sports car. Because other than that, the Sierra Teca handles so well the body so composed and controlled that it, at times I, I feel myself forgetting that I'm driving an Ateca and I feel like I'm driving a Leon because I have driven the Leon FR, I have dri driven the Ibiza FR, I've driven the regular Ateca as well. So it does feel very car-like. And I said this earlier in my other review of the, uh, of the standard Ateca, that it does feel very car-like. And that's of course, that, that sensation is heightened here in the FR. But this is as low as my seat will go and although these seats are nice, side bolstering, like the Leon Cupra, is not the best. But of course I don't expect you to be driving this Ateca FR on track so you don't really have to be worried too much about that. But apart from that, let's just check once again what the mileage is showing in case we get a much more realistic reading right now. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. 9.9 liters so it's going down definitely and like I said with the 2 liter TSI petrol if it was 6.4 uh, this will be easily around 6 ish the Ateca FR in more dynamic conditions is definitely an interesting car to drive it's definitely fun but you should realize what you're getting into and you shouldn't expect this car to be a hot hatch it's not and as long as you're aware of that I think you will be pretty satisfied we were looking for a place to film the conclusion and we had this fantastic backdrop of this mountains and the valley and the and a full rainbow arching from the left to the right unfortunately now the clouds have kind of covered it up by the time we got out and set up the camera but anyway let's summarize today's drive the Sieta Teca FR starts at around 29,000 euros for the 1.4 Eco TSI with 150 horsepower and the six-speed manual. If you want a bigger engine like the two-liter TDI that we have here with 190 horsepower, four-wheel drive and a seven-speed DSG, then you're looking at something over 37,000 euros. Plus, there's a little bit of extras that you can always add to these cars, upgraded seats, upgraded infotainment system and things like that will make the price even higher. But overall, I think the Ateca FR on its own is a really good car. It has good value for money, has a lot of safety features like adaptive cruise control, lane departure assist, blind spot monitoring, parking cameras, things like that. It's also fairly dynamic with the FR trim, the dynamic chassis control, the um, more powerful engines, and of course, the sporty steering wheel. All in all, this car is good, but it's not a hot SUV. Of course, you know, maybe a Seat Ateca Cupra or a Tiguan GTI or a Ford Kuga STI would be a little bit different, but I think we don't have to worry about it. These cars, while they're good, they can't really compare with the hot hatches. I mean, the Cupra that I drove today was really fantastic. You just need to have a lower center of gravity, I think, which is very important for a hot hatch, which SUVs by definition don't really have. But anyway, I'm interested to see what happens maybe with the uh, Ateca Cupra and maybe a Tiguan GTI. And then we can really compare and see if hot SUVs are going to be a trend in the future, yes or no. Let's wait for this car to pass. Anyway, now you can hear me again. I just want to say thank you guys for watching. Let us know what you feel about this. Put your comments in the section below. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll see you guys next time.